Hello and welcome to The Watches TV. Today we end our saga about chronographs by shining a spotlight on some recent and amazing model. And to give a little touch of panache to this selection, we decided to focus only on very original and innovative ones. Precision depends first on the frequency of its escapement. And the frequency is defined by the number of oscillations per minute performed by the balance wheel. The highest the frequency is, the most precise is the watch. The reason is simple. Timekeeping is the ability to cut the flow of time into small sections in order to be able to count them. And the shorter these units are, the more accurate the measurement is. This was the focus of Tagayer when the brand developed his high-frequency movements a few years ago. Watchmaking purists have been very sensitive to this program as it really pushed boundaries in terms of chronometry. But this program has been closed because the brand implemented a new strategy. Nevertheless, the high-end frequency chronographs of Tagayer remain impressive. They have been developed by Guy Semon and his team. Guy Semon is the current managing director of Tagayer, but also the head of the R&D department. To increase the frequency, engineers decided to completely reconstruct the escapement. Usually, the frequency of a chronograph's movement is either of 21,600 or 28,800 beats per minute, which is 3 or 4 hertz. The frequency of the micro gear, which was the fastest of those chronographs, is of 1 two thousandths of a second. In other words, 7,200,000 beats per hour or 1,000 hertz. Just imagine this is 250 times faster than a usual movement. And it was made possible by implementing a new escapement system based on a vibrating blade. The Micro Gear 10,000 was, and still is, the fastest chronograph on the market, but it is hard to find one now as the production stopped. Let's continue with the Audemars Piguet Rialog Concept Lab Timer Michael Schumacher. Michael Schumacher is passionate about watches and as an ambassador of the brand, he got involved into special projects including the development of a new chronograph. Its main feature is that he has two chronographs second hands one above the other and both allow to measure lap times. We'll see how it works very soon. But before that, you have to know that it works also as a usual chronograph and as a flyback chronograph. So, how works the lap time function? It has its own pusher, positioned at 9 on the case band, that allows using the two hands in different ways. Timing an event starts as usual by pushing the start button, which allows both second hands to move together. Then, by pressing the lap timer pusher, the first chronograph second hand stops while the other flies back to zero and starts measuring a new lap or event. Pressing the lap timer pusher once again causes the second chronograph second hand to stop, while the first one resets and automatically begins timing another lap. In addition, this lap timer chronograph allows to restart the moving second hand by pressing the reset button. This may be needed if, for instance, you want to save the previous measurement and not take into account the current one. And when the race is over, you have just pressed the stop button, the reset one, and the chronograph is ready for a new measure. This caliber 29 923 was developed by Audemars Piguet Renault Papier and just to give one example of its high level of technicity, it has three column wheels to command the function. The next chronograph we are going to discuss about comes from the Vallée de Joux and is called the Duometre Chronograph. It has been made by Gégère Lecoult and it is the first model of the brand integrating the dual wing system. The dual wing system refers to a new type of movement architecture. To improve the precision of the whole watch, each additional function to the main one is powered by its own source of energy. This means that the complication has its own spring barrel and a gear train independent of the sub-assemblies driving the time display. The two systems only share the same regulator, meaning the balance wheel and the escapement. This dual architecture also allows new way to display the functions and the duometre chronograph is a very good example of it. Here, the chronograph counters are on the right side of the dial and clearly diverge from the time displays by both the position and the different colored hand, blue for the chronograph and gold for the time. 
This provides a very good legibility to the chronograph at which is also a monopusher chronograph. The next chronograph is the Debetun Maxi Chrono and can be directly identified because all the hands are coaxially positioned in the middle of the dial. The positioning of the hands involves to develop a movement in a total different way than usual. And in this case, all the functions of the chronograph, meaning the seconds, the minutes and the hours, are separate into the movement. For this reason, each has its own clutch system and Debetun invented a new one especially for the seconds indication, which is a mix between a vertical clutch and an horizontal clutch and that was called the absolute clutch. If you want to know more about this fascinating chronograph, just watch the report we published a few weeks ago and where we interviewed Denis Flageolet, master watchmaker and co-founder of the Bethune. This is the end of our saga about the chronograph. We hope you learned interesting things and if you liked it, don't hesitate to share it with your friends. Keep following us. Bye! <laughs>